Hello everyone, welcome to our channel. Today we're going to show you step by step how to find the information you need in order to add a CMT or CMTX HMI to your WinCloud domain. This tutorial covers a wide range of products, so if you find that certain steps aren't applicable to your project, please feel free to skip around. And with that, let's get started. If you've already designed a project using EasyBuilder Pro, please ensure that the server location is set to global within the WinCloud tab. To begin, let's first determine what HMI model we have. The model name can be found on the gray label adhered to the HMI. On my desk, I have a CMT3072XH, which has a built-in display. Some HMI models like the CMT SVRX820 don't have a built-in display. These HMIs may be accessed by their web server or by using our remote monitoring software. We'll discuss the procedure needed for these HMIs shortly. Now that we know that this procedure applies to your HMI model, let's power on the HMI and connect this unit to the internet. To do this, select the orange or blue disk in the top left corner to open the HMI's system menu. At this time, most HMIs have a system menu similar to the CMT3072XH that I am using within this demonstration. However, some models, like the CMT3072XP, have an updated user interface. I'll show you how to check the network settings using our updated UI in a moment. Let's click the lock icon to log in to the system menu of our CMT3072XH. The default password for all HMI models is 111. 111. While logged in, select the Network tab to determine what LAN ports are available on this unit. In most cases, two LAN ports will display within the Network tab. However, some HMIs, like those with an active CODIS license, will only show one LAN port in this menu. At this point, if your HMI does not have a CODISYS license, please connect the HMI's LAN 1 port to an internet access point, like your router. Then click Ethernet 1. If your HMI does have a CODISYS license, please connect the HMI's LAN 2 port to an internet access point, and click Ethernet LAN 2. Within this menu, assign valid network settings to your HMI or enable Obtain an IP address automatically to assign an IP via DHCP. When finished, click OK to save these network settings, then scroll down and select the Easy Access 2.0 tab. Within the Easy Access 2.0 tab, we'll need to find something called the hardware key. This is a string of characters that we'll use to add this HMI to our domain. Depending on your OS version, the hardware key may be located at the top of this menu, or by clicking an option called Activation. On our updated UI, we can modify the network settings within the Network tab. Once again, if your HMI does not have a CODIS's license, please connect the HMI's LAN 1 port to an Internet Access Point. Then, click Configure below Ethernet LAN 1. If your HMI does have a CODIS's license, please connect the HMI's LAN 2 port to an Internet Access Point. Then, click Configure below Ethernet LAN 2. The HMI will prompt you to log in if you have not done so already. And after adjusting the network settings, click Save. Select the Easy Access 2.0 tab to locate the HMI's hardware key, which can be viewed by clicking the Hardware Key option at the top of this menu. Now, if you have a screenless HMI, like a CMT SVRX820, or a gateway, like a CMT G01, that does not have a CODIS's license, we can find the hardware key and configure the network settings by first connecting this unit's LAN 1 port to our router. If you're using a CMT CTRL01, please connect the LAN 2 port to your router instead. By default, the ports that I've just mentioned will retrieve an IP address via DHCP. We can determine the IP of this unit using the Utility Manager, an application installed with EasyBuilder Pro. To do this, search for Utility within the Start menu of your Windows PC. 
and select Utility Manager EX. Within the Utility Manager, click on the Select Model button and choose CMTX Series Advanced. If you're using a CMT SVRX820, A22, or a CMT FHDX820, if you have a CMT G01 or other G series model, or if you are using a CMT CTRL01, please select IIoT Gateway Series. Lastly, if you have a CMT SVR100, 200, or a CMT FHD, please select CMT Series. Once you've selected the correct model, click the Analysis and Testing tab and select Reboot. Within this menu, click the Search All button and you should find the HMI's IP, as long as your PC is connected to the same network. If the Utility Manager does not find the IP of your device, select the Search and Change IP button. Follow the instructions to download WinPCAP and once installed, select the Search and Change IP button once more. In the following dialog, click Refresh if you don't see your device. Then, select your device and use the dialog to change the IP. If we enter this IP into a web browser, we can access the web server of this unit. Once the login page opens, please enter the password of this unit. The default password is 111111. As before, we have a few variations of our web server. The most modern variation is what you see here. And we can find the hardware key of this unit by selecting the Easy Access 2.0 link within the Features menu. On the Legacy web server, you can access the hardware key by selecting the Easy Access 2.0 tab after login. And lastly, if you have a CMT SVR X822 or a CMT SVR200, Click the Start button within the Easy Access 2.0 tab and take note of the session ID and password. If you have either of these models, you will need this information instead. Now we're ready to add these units to our WinCloud domain. Since WinCloud is still evolving, the steps discussed within the next part of this tutorial may not accurately reflect the WinCloud UI. So, if at any point WinCloud receives an update, we will do our best to update the following instructions as well. To get started, let's use our web browser to open WinCloud.net. If you don't have a WinCloud domain, use the Register button to create a new account. Then, after account creation, please log in to WinCloud. To add an HMI, you will need to log in using an account with either admin or super user credentials. Then, select the Device tab and click Add HMI in the top left corner. Within this pop-up, select the service that corresponds with the activation code or card that you've purchased. As an example, if you have an activation code for Easy Access 2.0, a remote access service, please select Easy Access 2.0. Then, within the Action Type drop-down list, select Using Activation Card to activate any unit that did not provide a session ID and password. Once selected, enter the hardware key of that unit and the activation code as well. All other fields are optional. When finished, click Submit to activate this unit. And again, if your HMI was a CMT SVR X822 or a CMT SVR200, Please select Add by Session ID slash Password from the Action Type drop-down list. Then, enter the HMI's Session ID and Password within the required fields, and click Submit to add this unit to your domain. If you found this tutorial helpful and would like to see more, head on over to our channel to check out the latest technical tutorials. Feel free to check out our forum as well for free demo projects, user manuals, and more. Thank you for watching.